we can be. You know, laws are put in place to keep people from being who they really are. You know that? You take the laws away, people can be who they really are and get, get away with it. And that is what is happening in this world right now. People are being the sinful, awful, icky, nasty people that they are without God in their lives, doing whatever they want to do because nobody's stopping them. No laws, you know... If the if the policeman stands up, well, you're just who are you to tell me what to do? You know what I'm saying? I'm preaching, and that's his job. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hush. But this song is called "Work on Ourselves." Okay, work on ourselves is what we need to do. We don't need to. I don't need to work on Justin. Justin's got to work on Justin. I don't need... Oh, somebody said amen over there. I don't know who that was. Somebody... There ain't nobody out here in this parking lot that can work on Jeff Martin. Jeff Martin can work on Jeff Martin. And Jeff Martin needs to work on Jeff Martin every day. He needs to wake up and work on himself. We need to work on ourselves. Quit worrying about what everybody else is doing. Work on yourself. That's what this song is about. James telling thanks. Well, everybody keeps on pointing out flaws and joining together against that other guy's cause. But Jesus said, and I think I ought to mention it. You can't see a speck if your eyes got a stick in it. So why can't we just work on ourselves? Well, I know that I've got issues of my own. So before I go out writing somebody's wrong, when my finger points, there's three pointing back at me in my life. Well, it ain't what it ought to be, so why can't we just work on ourselves? Everybody's throwing stones from houses made of glass. If we just tidy up our own homes, then maybe change would come to pass yeah everybody keeps on pointing out flaws joining together against that other guy's cause but jesus said and i think i ought to mention it you can't see a speck if your eyes got a stick in it so why can't we just work on ourselves is made of glass if we just tidy up our own homes then maybe change would come to pass no I know that I've got issues of my own so before I go out writing somebody's wrong when my finger points there's three pointing back at me my life well it ain't what it ought to be so why can't we just work on ourselves tell me why tell me why can't we just 
work on ourselves. Hey Amen. I mean, thank you, Brother Nathan. Well, amen. Thank you, Brother Jeff, for that reminder. Um, as Jesus said, we need to deal with the beam in our own eye before we start working on the speck in everybody else's eye. Thank you for that um, wonderful reminder in song this morning. If you got a copy of God's Word, be turning to Psalm 129. 129 is where we're going to be at, actually in 129 and 132. Um, relatively short psalms. But one thing is for certain, according to Jesus, is that if you follow Him, you and I are going to face some times of persecution. We're going to face people talking about us. We're going to face um, times of hardship. But I'm glad that even in the midst of our persecution, even in the midst of our hardship and heartache, I'm glad that we are promised victory every day that we live. Now we do have victory in Jesus as we sang about a moment ago and that's what these two psalms are about and I believe the Lord wants to speak to us this morning as I preach on the subject of victory in the midst of persecution. Beginning at verse 1, Psalm 129 says, Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth. May Israel now say, Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth. Yet they have not prevailed against me. The plowers plowed upon my back. They made long their furrows. The Lord is righteous. He hath cut asunder the cords of the wicked. Let them all be confounded and turned back that hate Zion. Let them be as the grass upon the housetops which withereth afore it groweth up. Wherewith the mower filleth not his hand, nor he that bindeth sheaves his bosom. Neither do they which go by say, The blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. Now Psalm 130. Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. My soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they that watch for the morning. Let Israel hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption. <coughs> and he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities." Again, I'm preaching today on the subject of victory in the midst of persecution. <coughs> I ask you, have you ever been persecuted for doing what was right? Maybe you were overlooked for a job promotion because you refused to do something questionable that maybe your boss was asking you to do. Maybe you were made fun of for, not, for refusing to participate in a sinful behavior with everyone else. Maybe you were shunned by your peers for standing for or doing what was right when no one else would. The truth is that Jesus said that all who live godly in this present age will suffer persecution. Everyone who's ever stepped out from the crowd to follow Jesus Christ has faced some sort of persecution in their life. Jesus also said that we were blessed and counted in good company when we suffer persecution. I'm reminded of what Jesus said in the Beatitudes when he said, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He said, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. And then he said, Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. <coughs> you and I are in good company whenever we have to endure persecution for doing what's right or for standing for Jesus Christ. 
He said, all who live godly, all of God's people throughout time have suffered persecution. <clears throat> he allows persecution to test our faith, to purify us, and us to get and us and to get us to look up to him for deliverance. This was the case for Judah and the Israelites in Hezekiah's day, whenever these words of this psalm of these psalms were penned. And it's the case also for all Christians throughout the last 2,000 years of human history as we have stepped out to follow the true and living God. It's the case for the believer as well. As we look at these two psalms today, I want us to notice that we aren't promised to never have to go through persecution. We're not promised a bed of roses. We aren't promised that we won't have to go through some hardships and trials, but I'm glad that even in the midst of it, we have victory in Jesus. <clears throat> even in the midst of persecution, even in the midst of people talking about us, even in the midst of people turning their back on us and walking away because of the stand that we take for Christ, we are promised victory in the midst of it an ultimate victory on the other side. The psalmist starts out by reminding us of immense persecution. He's talking about a time, he said, that they had basically tormented him from his youth. And then just so that they get the point, he said, let Israel all say again, and he repeats it. In other words, he wants to get across the point to each one of us and to all those who would come after him, making their pilgrimage to Jerusalem, he wanted them to be reminded that we go through some stuff, that we go through some times of persecution. Now anyone who studied history, you know that the people of Israel have had a long history of persecution. Starting in the Old Testament time, even to today, the Jewish people, the people of Israel, God's original covenant people have had to go through persecution. In Moses' day, Pharaoh killed the babies, intensified their workload, <coughs> took away their straw, and pursued them into the Red Sea. In the days of the judges, the Philistines, the Midianites, and other tribes would tr had tried to destroy them. In Hezekiah's day, the Assyrians threatened slaughter and attempted to enslave them. In Daniel's day, the Babylonians carried them away captive and tried to assimilate them into a godless and pagan culture. In Esther's day, Haman tried to annihilate them. In the intertestament period, during the time of the Maccabees, Antiochus Epiphanes, the Greek emperor, tried to destroy their religion. In Titus, the Romans' day, their temple was destroyed. Thousands were slaughtered and the rest dispersed. In modern times, in World War II, Hitler tried to exterminate them. In 1948 and 1967, the Arabs tried to drive them into the sea. I never will forget in 2010 when I went to Israel, my tour guide, his name was Isaac. We were up touring the Mossad, which is a which is a place, a military place, and a place where the last holdouts against Titus the Roman, where they ended up committing suicide so they wouldn't have to submit themselves and be enslaved by the Romans. He told us something. He said every day Arab nations get up and they have a goal of driving the Jewish people into the sea. He said, for us in Israel, we only have to lose one battle, whereas they can lose many battles. You see, throughout time and throughout history, the Jewish people, God's original covenant people, that he, by the way, is not finished with yet. And by the way, all of prophecy is moving toward the day whenever God fulfills his original covenant with them. And a nation is reborn in a day, but throughout history, those people, the Jewish people, have had to suffer persecution. In a future day, they will be turned over to an idle shepherd, according to Zechariah 11:17, and persecuted again in a final battle 
in the valley of Armageddon just before Christ returns to set up his earthly kingdom. Yes, they have had a long history of immense persecution. But friends, those of us who know Jesus, those of us in the church, the spiritual seed of Abraham, if you will, we too for the last 2,000 years have had a history of persecution. You see, the enemies of God always persecute the people of God. Throughout 2,000 years of church history, true believers have also been persecuted. They've been persecuted at the hands of emperors and Caesars, at the hands of popes and church leaders during the Inquisition and Dark Ages at the hands of corrupt governments and communist regimes, at the hands of Muslims and other false religions, and now at the hands and from the mouths of radical secularists who long for a world full of religion but devoid of God and God's people. We've had to endure great persecution. In recent times, even here in America, the land of the free and the home of the brave, God's people have faced persecution. I remember in 1999 when the Columbine High School shooting happened, it was one of the first high school shootings that gained national prominence. And the gunman went into a group of students at Columbine High School outside of San Diego, and it was a group of Christians who were praying. And the gunman asked a girl named Cassie Bernal and said, Do you believe in God? And she said, Yes, I believe in God. And those turned out to be the last words that she spoke in her life, this side of eternity, as that gunman then turned the gun on her and pulled the trigger. Why did that happen? It happened because people have a sinful heart at their core, but it happened also because Jesus said it would be this way, that all who live godly in this present age will have to suffer some type of persecution. And when all's said and done, those who are on the Lord's side, those who've said, as Joshua said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Those who stood on the Word of God, I'm glad when all is said and done, we're going to be standing on Mount Zion with the Lamb, Jesus Christ. When it's all shaken out, and it's all over with down here, we're going to be standing with Jesus in heaven. I ask you, are you waiting on God to deliver you from a certain situation? I don't know about you, but I hate waiting. I'm impatient. When I go shopping, I want to go get whatever I'm going to get, get it and get out and get home. I don't want to waste all day. When I'm walking somewhere, I want to walk fast. When I go to the doctor and they've given me an appointment, and that ain't very often because I'm stubborn, I'm a man, and I don't go to doctors. Amen. <laughs> There's somebody tracking with me out there. But when I go to the doctor and I have an appointment, he says, I'm going to see you at such and such time. I want to be seen at that time. I don't want to wait all day, but sometimes with God, especially, we have to wait. We have to go through times of waiting. And during that waiting period, sometimes the persecution gets strongest. Sometimes the pain and heartache gets the most intense. But I'm glad that even though he's not in a hurry, he's always on time. And when God in his timing says enough, he turns back our captivity. He turns the captivity of Zion. I'm glad that we can confidently expect Him to move. If you're waiting on God to deliver you from a certain situation or do something He has promised to do, I just want to encourage you this morning, examine yourself. Repent of any known sin and immerse yourself in the Word of God. Get as close to God as you possibly can because we can confidently expect that God will deliver us. In the Lord we find mercy. In the Lord we find redemption and forgiveness. And in the Lord we find deliverance. So I ask you again in closing this morning, I ask you, are you going through something? 
Are there people that have been persecuting you because of your stand for Jesus? Maybe it's just you're struggling with spirits of infirmity in your body. Maybe it's the devil's been lying to you and just telling you to give up. Telling you it's never going to get any better. I'd encourage you to do those three things this morning. Number one, examine yourself. Start asking God, is there anything between my soul and you? And then, once He reveals that, repent and turn from it. And then commit yourself today to immerse yourself in God's Word, to get as close to God as you possibly can. You see, we're not promised that we won't go through persecution. We're not promised that we won't go through trials and tribulations and hardships, but we are promised victory in the midst of it. We're promised that He will never leave us or forsake us. We're promised that He will show Himself strong on our behalf. So if everyone would just bow your head and close your eyes right there where you're at in your car. And let's just spend some time with Him. Just ask yourself, is there anything in my life? And ask God, God, is there anything in my life that's hindering you from working in the way you want to? And then as He shares that with you, repent. Confess it to Him and then repent. Bow to turn from it. And then make a commitment today to get as close to Him as you possibly can. I want to pray for each one of you and just so I better know how to pray, who this morning you would just say, Brother Nathan, I've been going through some hard times. Maybe it's times of persecution or just trials and afflictions. And you just say, would you pray for me this morning? Would you just slip your hand up out of your car window so I can see that? And I want to pray for you today. God bless you all over this parking lot. Lord, you're a good God even when we're not. You're good enough to show us the areas of our lives that need changing. And right now, as we examine ourselves, you begin to draw to mind the things, the areas of our life that haven't been completely surrendered to you. Lord, I pray that you would just help us to turn from it. Lord, we confess our sins of pride. We confess our sins of looking to the world for our answers and not looking to you. Of setting our affections on things below and not on things above. And Lord, we want to turn from that. Lord, we need you. Lord, our nation needs you. Our church needs you. Lord, our families need you. Lord, I just pray that we would just, as we turn and that we experience your forgiveness and we walk in that, Lord, I pray we'd get as close to you as we possibly can. Lord, you said we would seek you and find you when we search diligently with all our hearts. So, Lord, I pray for each one that raised their hand. I pray, Lord, that they would begin to draw close to you. Lord, I just pray that this week they'd be closer to you than they were last week. Lord, that they would experience your presence even beginning right now in a powerful way. Lord, that they would know that you're there, that they would know that you have their back, that they would know that you're fighting their battles for them. And Lord, I thank you for this. Lord, we need revival. And Lord, we just trust as we turn from our wicked ways, we're going to hear from heaven. You're going to forgive our sins and heal our land. And Lord, we pray you would begin that process right here today, right in our cars, right here on this ground, Lord, that you would begin the process of bringing healing to our lives, to our families, healings to our community, and healings to our nation and our world. Lord, we pray you'd make one last move before Jesus comes. We see many people who now are on the other side. Lord, that we'd see them swept into the kingdom of God. That we would see them turn from sin into Jesus. And you'd use us 
as your witnesses to see that accomplished in Jesus' name. Maybe you're here today and you've never been saved and you need to trust Jesus as your Savior. He's only a prayer away. If you just right there in your car, call on Jesus and ask Him to save you. Ask Him to forgive you. He's willing. Maybe just say a prayer like this. Tell Him, dear Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner and I've done wrong. And today I turn from that sin. Thank you for dying on the cross to pay for my sin and rising from the dead to give me eternal life. Jesus, I need to be saved. Please come into my life and save me right now. From this day forward, the best I know how, help me live for you. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. If you just prayed to be saved, the next step is to make that public. I'd love to hear from you. Before you leave, if you'd tell me you're making that commitment, I'd appreciate that. Maybe you've been saved and not baptized. That's the first step of obedience in following Jesus. If you need to be baptized, please see me. Set up a time for that. Maybe you've been saved and baptized, but God wants you to be a member of New Hope. The invitation's for you also to unite with our fellowship and become a member here at New Hope if God would let you do that. If you've been saved and baptized by immersion, to show your public faith in Jesus Christ. We'd love for you to be a member and a part here at New Hope. If you need to do any of that, we're going to have a hymn for you to come and give your offerings on. We got the bucket set up here again. If you'd like to walk up and put your tithes and offerings in that, you can do that. If you'd like to share with me some commitment that you're wanting to make today, you can do that as well. But do business with the Lord. Lord, have your way. Lord, as people give, bless each gift and each giver. Lord, as people do business with you, may the lost become the found. And Lord, may you have your way in our lives as we draw close to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all sing for us, brother. Surrender all. All to Jesus.
us your prayer this morning as it is mine. I surrender all and your commitment as well um, that we surrender it all to Jesus. Thank you again for being here today. Um, again, um, if you came drove up um, after I made the announcement, next week we are going to flip-flop the inside and outside services. So we will have the drive-up service at 830 inside at 1045 primarily because we're in the summertime and the summer heat is beginning to get upon us so um, we will do drive up at 8 30 um, inside at 10 45 also inside 9 45 we have three bible classes that we are offering right now and um, hopefully before too long we can get the other bible classes up and going as well but um, we want to move in a um, we want to move in a wise manner and also um, in a safe manner and so we want um and we want people to be comfortable um coming to to the church as well so um thank y'all again for being here um let's bow and be dismissed in prayer i'm gonna ask brother dan spivey i know he's in his car would you mind getting out and coming up here and closing us in prayer um i know um before covid we were all used to his smiling face getting up and welcoming us all at the end of the service so uh, brother you come and you um Say whatever you want to say, and then close the center. Thank you, brother. Enjoyed your sermon today. Thanks, everybody that's here today, too. Um, I'm going to miss, actually, when we get back into the church, the, the miss the, the honking of the horns, because uh, that's been a lot of fun. Everybody, everybody go to Walmart. Everybody go to Walmart today. Actually, if, maybe not today, but somewhere down the road. Go, go and get you one of them. One of them horns, you know, the bicycle horns, ee, ee, you know, and then you can, take, you can bring that into church. And we'll, okay, never mind. Never mind. That's a good idea. All right, if you would, just bow your head, please. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, all the blessings that you've bestowed upon us. Um, continue to be with us, uh, Lord, as, we, as our country is in the troubles that we're in. Uh, to strengthen people, to, to touch their hearts, to soften their to, to soften their moods, their uh, heal the, the damage that's done, that they can feel your love, to uh, share your love, uh, to be part of you in the family of, of God. Heavenly Father, that's my prayer today. I want you to be with the rest of the church today, to those that aren't able to be here, those that are sick, uh, those that are uh, in nursing homes. Heavenly Father, uh, touch them, give them some peace, some relief, be with their families, and uh, continue to love us, Lord, the way that you always have. Forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings. Forgive us of where we fail you, Heavenly Father. Strengthen us. Let us shine your light so others can see it.